Hey guys, Dennis back with a brand new video. So today I'm gonna to show you how to change out your old plastic extruder on your Ender 3 to Creality's new updated metal version. All right, so to remove the existing extruder, what we wanna do is pull our electrical connector out of the stepper motor, and then we need a two millimeter wrench. And we're simply just going to loosen up these two screws here, and that should allow our extruder motor to just come free. And then you can just lift that right off. The Bowden tube actually sits right inside of this block here, so this is free to just lift directly right off. And then we need to loosen up this screw here to remove the old plastic extruder off of the stepper motor. All right, you're also gonna need a three millimeter and a two and a half millimeter Allen. All right, so to remove the extruder gear, you need a one and a half millimeter Allen, and there's two screws on this, and then that just simply slides off. Now here's our new kit. We're gonna pull everything out of it. So we're gonna mount the base plate first. So the countersunk screw that they give you for this new base plate is actually too long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reuse the old one. And the way I knew that it was too long was that this plate still wobbled up and down with that screw tightened all the way. All right, so what we wanna do now is we wanna take the arm, we wanna take this little roller bearing and this lock washer and this socket cap screw. And we wanna assemble that onto this arm assembly. And we're gonna tighten that down real good. And then we're gonna verify that this wheel still spins, right? We want this to be free because this is where the filament comes through right here. All right, the next step is to take the M3 button head screw and thread this in on the arm here. And you want this to bottom out. And what this is, this is the spring capture. When this is mounted onto this piece here, this holds the spring from popping out. Now we're gonna take our spring. We're gonna take this little nut cert looking piece here. That goes into the end of here. And then we're just gonna set it on top of here, so it looks like this for now. Now we're gonna put in our hardware for the pivot point. Now that pivot point hardware is just this little sleeve that fits inside of here. And then this M3 by 18 socket head cap screw goes in here. And you wanna install this with the set screws up. Right? You want this knurled piece to be right in line with the groove on that roller. And then with one of these set screws, directly on the flat, we're gonna tighten that up. So if you don't have a direct drive and you just have the standard Ender 3 with your extruder motor mounted on the Z-axis bracket here, obviously you wanna make sure that the new extruder parts go on top here and your motor goes up from the bottom. But if you're using the direct drive like myself, the next step here is they want you to install this M4 screw here. And what this screw does is it allows you to put more tension on the spring here. But the only issue with this for the direct drive extruder, and this does not apply if you're mounting this to the Z-axis bracket here, because you have plenty of room for this, right? So with the direct drive that Creality has out, they give you this little plastic bracket that's mounted to it. And I can't mount this bracket here with this screw. So what I had to do was I had to go ahead and buy some M4 by eight millimeter long set screws. And this set screw is gonna allow me to basically have that set screw countersunk inside this plate here, and then it'll allow this spacer bracket to fit in here flush. This is all it is right here. So all this does is this allows you to tension the spring if you need to. So I'm not gonna put a ton of tension on here, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna ride this in until it's pressing on here. And what this screw also does is it helps keep this spring assembly from coming undone. So if this wasn't here, this whole spring assembly could actually pop out, as you can see there. So it, it does serve two purposes. So that's why I didn't wanna just put the bracket on here without having something in its place. I noticed on the original, the Bowden tube actually went right in. This bottom piece here was flat. I found that I do have to install this Bowden tube bracket here. So we're gonna put that in, we'll tighten that up. We'll get our bracket here and then we'll get this mounted back onto the printer. And then what we're gonna do is we'll power the printer up. We will do a bed level and then we'll do a print test. All right, so we're tight now. All right, with the assembly all finished on the extruder motor, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take our spacer bracket, we're gonna set it in place here. 
and then we're gonna slide the Bowden tube into this connector. Okay, we're gonna slide that down, and then we're gonna put our screws in from the back side here. All right, so we have our extruder mounted. We're gonna put our connector back in, and all we need to do now is power this up and run a level on it. All right guys, so that wraps it up for this video. Super simple upgrade for your Ender 3 printer. I really recommend doing this because you're gonna get more consistent prints, more consistent feed on your filament, and your printer overall is just gonna operate better. So, as always, thanks for watching guys. Make sure to hit that like button, and consider subscribing if you're not. I have new videos coming out all the time, not just DIY videos, but 3D printing stuff. I love 3D printing, so you're gonna see a ton more content from me. Thanks for watching, until next time.